Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. And uh, we have on our live line with us this morning, Assemblyman Phil Palmasano. Assemblyman, thank you for joining us. It's good to be with you again, Brian. Well, Assemblyman, uh, starting out with uh, Albany slash Washington news, Governor Andrew Cuomo is uh, hitting at uh, President Trump pretty hard. Uh, the uh, governor sent out statements yesterday uh, in uh, email saying that he believes that uh, if President Trump uh, pardons uh, his longtime attorney, Michael Cohen, then Trump should be impeached. Uh, did you have any thoughts on that statement? Well, first of all, it's no surprise that Andrew Cuomo is um, going after Donald Trump. But as far as corruption, and I don't think anyone's talking about a pardons other than Andrew Cuomo, but if anyone's, uh, we could talk about pardons that Andrew Cuomo did later uh, for c- convicted sex offenders and, and murderers and rapists. We can get into that a little later. But if, you, if we talk about corruption, Andrew Cuomo is the last person who should be talking about corruption. Uh, he's, he's the one who shut down the Moreland Commission when it got too close to home. He's the one who got close people around him. Uh, the person who referred to him as his brother, Joe Percoco, was convicted of using the office to, to benefit themselves. The Buffalo Billion trial with Alan Calieros being convicted. Uh, close associate Todd Howe, who had, reports are showing, had to contact with the closest people in the Cuomo administration. Uh, Governor Cuomo is the last person that should be talking about and finger pointing when it comes to corruption because his, his whole administration has been surrounded with it. Uh, and that's why Mark Molinaro has a plan out that would address accountability and ethics in Albany. And that's why I'm proud to support Mark Molinaro because he's a, he's a, he's a, will do a great job for the state of New York. You know, his plan regards involves term limits, and if not term limits for uh, state legislators, why not term limits for legislative leaders? And, and to have more oversight into our economic development programs, uh, allowing the comptroller to have oversight over those programs, which the the, the governor fought or to have a database of deals which would basically list the projects that are going being funded and so people could see that there's more transparency. The governor has, has pushed back and fought against those types of transparency. So Andrew Cuomo is the last person who should be finger pointing when it comes to corruption because he's been surrounded by it. The uh, Empire Report New York page this morning is reporting that um, the uh, opponents in the governor's race, are t- including uh, Syracuse Mayor Stephanie Minor, uh, are all saying stop talking about Trump and talk about New York State? That's their advice to Governor Cuomo. Well, it's a good, a good, good advice because you know, the fact of the matter is, in, in New York State, we have the highest taxes and regulations in any state in the country. Uh, the, when you look at our property tax burden, you know he, he has done nothing to help relieve the unfunded mandate burden on our municipalities, which impacts the property taxpayers. Uh, you know, Mark Molino has a plan that would help reduce the, the property tax burden, you know, relative to the, the Medicaid system that the states should be taking over, not that it shouldn't be put on the county governments. Because right now, county governments have no say in the Medicaid program. They're only given a bill and said to pay it. Uh, the state is in a p- position to reform and revise the Medicaid program. Uh, and, and, and those costs shouldn't be borne by the property taxpayer. Uh, you know, there's a lot more we can do. When we're only 49th or 50th in business climate year after year, that's obviously sending the wrong message to those people we need to invest in, in to, 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 to invest and create private sector investment in our economy to hopefully create jobs. That's not working under this administration. And, and, and Governor Cuomo needs to be focusing on New York. Unfortunately, he's focused on running for president. Uh, I think everyone knows that. He's looking at 2020. Uh, every time he gets a chance, he's out there talking about the feds and, and, and President Trump, but he's, he needs to be focusing his attention on New York State and you know, stop making comments about America was never great. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, he made that statement uh, in New York City recently, uh, talking to a, uh, a liberal group there, and uh, then he kind of backtracked on it after President Trump said, uh, pointed out the obvious, and uh, then Cynthia Nixon jumped on um, Governor Cuomo for backtracking a little bit. Uh, Cynthia Nixon seems to maintain he should have stuck with the original statement, and um, you know, it, it, but it, the statement I don't think is is uh, it's it's not going to go away. It's kind of like what Rudy Giuliani uh, 
recently said on TV, truth isn't truth. Uh, you, you know, it's it's something that was uh, caught in a recording, a video recording, and uh, it's going to be brought up in commercials. It's going to be brought up in speeches and debates. Speaking of debates, did you have any thoughts on the governor's upcoming debate uh, in New York City on WCBS-TV? No, I'm, I'm interested to see how, how that plays off on TV. Um, but I'm more interested in having uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo commit to debates with our their GOP uh, candidate for governor, Mark Molinaro, one on one. You know, they have a, you know, those are the two. It's going to be either Mark Molinaro or Andrew Cuomo is going to be the next governor of the state of New York. Give the people an opportunity to see both of them one on one to discuss the important issues that face our state. That's what I want to see him, you know, commit to a debate with them instead of having you know, every third party and fourth party candidate in, in that debate because the fact of the matter is it will be either Mark Molinaro or Andrew Cuomo is our next governor and that's what we want to see a debate on and let's see Governor Cuomo commit to a debate with Mark Molinaro that's what I want to see don't don't keep putting it off let's we know Mark's our Republican candidate for governor let's have let's set up some debates with them right now so people can see an honest dialogue and back and forth between two candidates who, who will be our next governor in New York State and just real quick back on that comment, I know he tried to backtrack saying it, it was inartful. No, he's inartful. That, that comment was an offensive. It was, it was a slap in the face to the, to the heroes of our country that helped build this country, the greatest generation. You know, you think about the Tuskegee Airmen. You think about the heroes, our first responders. You know, those are the people who built this country. And do we have our problems and our challenges? Absolutely, Brian, we do. And that's why... Uh, but we still live in the greatest country in the world. But that's why we need, with those problems and challenges, we need serious leaders who are sincere and want to take on the issues rather than just try to make statements for political gain, for their own political gain, and, and, and do it to divide people. You know, Andrew Cuomo, from time and time again, has made statements to divide people who don't agree with him. You remember when he said that people aren't welcome in New York. If you're, you're, if you're pro-life, you're not welcome in New York. Think comments like that. That was, that was not just an artful. That was, that was, offensive and an insult and quite frankly i think he owes not just saying in artful he owes the, the, the people of this nation in, a, in this state an apology uh for his comments uh you talked about mark molinaro in your answer there uh governor cuomo uh, was recently the topic of a mark molinaro uh, tv commercial where they talked about the buffalo billion suspects mark Mul and the uh, new york daily news which is not known for being conservative hit cuomo pretty hard for saying that uh the governor tried to prevent that uh, commercial from going on TV. Mark Molinaro was not pleased with that and uh, criticized the governor for trying to block that ad. Yes, and, and, and obviously that, that, that complaint that he tried to file to get the, re the, the TV commercial removed was shot down. Uh, so I mean, the fact of the matter is this governor is surrounded by corruption, uh, has not done anything to, to fix it. Uh, you have, again, Joe Prococo, the person he referred to him as his brother, was known as the fixer for Governor Cuomo, who was using his office for political purposes, his official office for political purposes, was convicted for lining his own pockets. The Buffalo Billion trial, which you mentioned, Alan, Alan Carriolis um, being convicted. Todd Howe, who, who was a, a key witness, was also arrested, but key witness in that trial, was known to have close contact, the, the, the closest contact and access to the highest levels of the Cuomo administration. And we haven't had any comments on that yet from the administration, how, how they, how they deal with that. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of smoke around uh, this administration when it comes to corruption. That's why I just laugh when he talks about, tries to point out corruption in other places. He just needs to be looking in the mirror because his, his administration has been surrounded by corruption and he's not doing anything to fix it. Uh, unfortunately, you know, where's, where's the, why is he fighting accountability in his economic development programs? Why not let the comptroller of the state of New York who have oversight authority over some of these, these billions and billions of dollars that the governor is, you know, handing out checks like it's his money, but it's the people's money. We need more oversight. Why not a database of deals that lists all these, these funding of these programs that are going out so people can access it. So there's transparency. That's what Mark Molinaro is calling for term limits for, uh, elected officials for, for uh, Mark said he he would run two terms only. He's not going to continue to run for office. Uh, why not to why not to have a, a term limits or if not at the very least term limits for legislative leaders and and and, and, and committee chairs. And those are some you know ideal measures that would help deal with uh, the corruption and ethics reforms we've seen going on in Albany. The governor's talk talks a lot, but he's not backing it up, and, and that's why again Mark Molinaro is my 
my choice for for governor, and he he will do a great job representing this state. We're talking live this morning with Assemblyman uh, Phil Palmasano. Assemblyman, uh, there's the uh, primary uh, coming up uh, in uh, September. Uh, did you have any thoughts on any of those races? Well, I know our, the, the candidates locally have been working really hard getting out there to know, know, meet voters and, and talking to them. Uh, I know both of the candidates running for judge, they're, they're working real hard out there in the community, knocking on doors, uh, bringing their experience and, and, and talking about you know, being the next judge for Steuben County. Uh, and obviously you have Joe Arrigo running for state assembly. Joe's a friend of mine. Uh, he's been doing a good job. I work closely with Joe representing the Hornell and Clockton area in Steuben County. Uh, Joe's a good guy. He's been working real hard for the region. And, uh, and I'm hopeful Joe will be successful in his primary on election day because he, he's been working real hard. He's dedicated to the area. He's, he's been fighting, you know, for the people who put, who put him there, and I know I will continue to do so. We're speaking with Assemblyman Phil Palmasano. We're going to take a quick break, check the weather. We'll be back with the Assemblyman in just a moment. The summer clearance event continues at Maple City Dodge. 2018 Jeep Compass Latitude, 4x4. Four four. Only $169 a month for 24 months with $35.79 to its signing. 2018 Dodge Durango SXT Plus, all-wheel drive, great, great for, for winter. winter. Only $229 a month for 36 months and $2309 to its signing. Some fees and taxes may apply. See dealer for complete details. Maple City Dodge in Hornell. Get the real deal every, every time. Meteorologist Rob Carroll's with us now. He says it's going to be nice today, tomorrow, etc. Yeah, the weekend doesn't look too bad either, Brian. Uh, we will see the potential for a little shower and thunderstorm activity, uh, perhaps Saturday night uh, and then again Sunday night. But uh, right now, we look pretty good between now and the tail end of the weekend. Why? Big area of high pressure, which is centered near uh, South Bend, Indiana, stretches all the way down to Memphis, Tennessee. It's gradually going to work its way east over the top of us. Right now, much of the state in the clear. There's some cloudiness down around the city and over Long Island. And they've got some patchy cloudiness south of Syracuse this morning. So that'll be affecting the folks uh, heading off to the New York, New York State Fair, which opened in Syracuse earlier this week. But all in all, looks like the state's in for a pretty nice day. I think here we'll end up with partial sun overall. There'll be some fair weather clouds around. Temperatures are going to be about 75 to 80. Tonight we're clear 55 to 60. A little bit of fog may develop in some of the cooler valleys. Now tomorrow, look for sunshine, warm temperatures, nice day, 80 to 85. We're clear through tomorrow night, 60 to 65. Partly sunny, the story on Saturday, up around 80. Sunday's partly sunny, 80 to 85. Looks like the heat, the humidity, that's going to be back in the region by early next week. Back with Assemblyman Phil Palmasano. Assemblyman, um, the lieutenant governor candidate uh, this time around is uh, Julie Killian. Uh, kind of an interesting background. Uh, mother of five, uh, academic background. She's uh, a chemical engineer, went to Notre Dame. Uh, have you met with Julie Killian yet, Assemblyman Palmasano? Yes, I have, and I'm going to be um, um, seeing her this weekend as well. She's going to be in the region. We're going to be going doing some walking around, doing some tours, a couple of a uh, couple of events in in the region. She's uh, de dedicated. I think she brings a lot to the ticket to help Mark. Um, she has great experience and great background, and will be a great partner in, in, as our lieutenant governor. And uh, I, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more from her. And, and I know she's looking forward to coming to the area. She's been been through here before, and she'll be coming back again. So. Looking forward to seeing her, and she's a great addition to the ticket. Now, she's uh, from Westchester County, I believe. She uh, was on the uh, the Rye City Council and was a one-time uh, state, uh, state Senate candidate in that area. So um, I'll put in an interview request to speak with her. Hope we can have her on uh, sometime soon on the uh, Newsmaker Show. Uh, Assemblyman Palmasano, uh, you follow the, uh, I, I'm sure you do, you follow uh, Congressman Tom Reed. Uh, he's getting, um, you know, a lot of questions. Uh, do you still stand with uh, President Donald Trump and so on and so forth? And he does uh, at this point. Uh, wanted. We don't usually have you weigh in on Washington politics, uh, but did, did you have any thoughts on uh, all these uh, uh 
all this pressure put on uh, the president uh, going after all these people uh, near him, it seems to me that most of the offenses that these people are accused of, whether you're talking Manafort or Cohen or any of the others, it's uh, tax cheating on their own individual parts, uh, Manafort and Cohen, doesn't seem tied to the White House. Yes, I mean, listen, no one's above the law. So if, if there's a violation of law, then that should be addressed. And that's why you have these court cases going on. But unfortunately, I think Tom, Tom, Tom is a, Tom, let me just say something about Tom. He's a fighter and an advocate for this area. He works day and night trying to do what's best for this region. He's worked across the aisle. You saw just last week he had uh, his his colleague from, from New Jersey, a Democrat, who was uh, co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus with him. They talked about working together and why that's important and trying to bring more civility and collegiality back to the House. I remember former Congressman Emil Holton used to talk about the civility and how is that something I try to do in the state legislature with, with the exchange we've done with our downstate colleagues coming upstate and myself going downstate with the, some of our upstate colleagues to see some of the challenges they have in the city. You, you don't get the solutions if you don't have a dialogue and a discussion. And that's the one thing I, I've always liked about Tom. Tom will, have, Tom will have that discussion and dialogue, that civil discourse. I mean, no, no member of Congress has held more town hall meetings than Tom Reed. Uh, some of them don't want to do it, but Tom Reed's out there doing them, listening. And, and Tom's an advocate. He's, he's a friend, and I'm proud to support him as our congressman. I know he works incredibly hard for this area and continues to do uh, good things for the area. And, and obviously there are those who don't like Tom and, and are very visceral in their opposition Tom. Unfortunately, sometimes it gets nasty and personal, and that's, there's no place for that in politics. If you want to disagree on issues and disagree on policy, that's one thing. But to get personal and to get hateful, there's no place for that in our politics. And unfortunately, that's the type of divisiveness that people – really don't like in our politics. That's why the, the, our institutions, whether it's in, in Washington or in New York, why there's so much divisiveness and, and there's just no people wanting to get involved. And that's the thing that I, I wish we could change more in our politics, to bring more civility and discourse into our politics. I remember the stories of President Reagan and Tip O'Neill. You know, they would fight on policy during the day, but at the end of the day, they would get together and have a drink and talk and, and be civil to each other. We need more of that type of this civility and more of that type of collegiality in, in our in our government, because when you can, when you can sit down and talk to people, that's when we get the solutions and trying to find common ground to work together. And I know Tom Reed's tried to do that, and I think his work on the Problem Solvers Caucus is something we should all be proud of because he has has some success there. Does it change things overnight? Of course not, but it certainly steps in the right direction. And you can see where even his colleague from New Jersey said that Tom works with him and they, they talk and, they, and they're civil and collegial and they work on issues. Sure, they disagree on issues, just like I disagree with my colleagues from New York City on a number of issues. But we've become close friends and there's a respect there, understanding that we're both fighting for our areas and our constituents and what's best for our regions and, and our states. And I think that's the thing that, that we need to have more of in our politics, more of that civility and, and talking to people rather than just finger pointing. And we got to take the hate and the divisiveness out of our politics. No one wants that. That's, that doesn't inspire the next generation of People it doesn't inspire our young uh, young people who want to get involved in politics and participate in the process. That's like one of my favorite things to do is go to schools and talk to young people, and encourage them to get involved. And it's that divisiveness and negativity that it kind of sours them. We need to change that. We need to get our young people involved, and we need to have more, you know, more respect. And hopefully, you know, people can start become to have more trust in our government. And that's unfortunately because of the, the negativity and, and the scandals and corruptions you see. Assemblyman, well, when you spoke about uh, uh, Congressman Tom Reed and his colleague from New Jersey, uh, Representative uh, Josh uh, Gothheimer there. Uh, Reed is on uh, the, uh, I, I believe that Gothheimer is a part of the uh, organization that Reed helped found, the uh, Bipartisan uh, Problem Solvers Caucus. It was kind of interesting, in the last press call that Reed had the other day, he said, Reed said, that the Problem Solvers Caucus are so dedicated to uh, getting rid of gridlock in Washington and the idea of one member of the House of Representatives taking over the floor and blocking what the majority wants to vote on. Reed says that he gave a scenario. He said, for example, if the Republicans win in November, back control of the House and put in a try to put in a House speaker that won't go along with what the... Uh, 
Uh, Problem Solvers Caucus wants to do to change the rules uh, for voting in the House. Reed says, okay, we'll put the, the, we'll, we have the votes with the Problem Solvers Caucus to put in Democrat Steny Hoyer, even if the Republicans win. He said, on the other hand, let's imagine that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other party wins. We have another candidate there uh, who could come in, uh, Congressman uh, Steve Scalise. So it was, that, that I thought was very interesting. And a lot of the reporters picked up on that and had a lot of questions about it. Yes, it's interesting, and it actually goes back to what I say about Tom wanting to try to get things done and working together in a bipartisan fashion for to move our region and our state and our country forward. And that's what I admire about Tom, and I'm proud to support him. And, and I think he's about getting getting to solutions and working together and understanding that politics shouldn't be hateful and negative and nasty. There should be uh, a dialogue between colleagues. And when you sit down and talk and you can talk civilly, that's when you can get the solutions that you both can agree to. I mean, sometimes you might agree there might be 10 issues and you might agree on three of them. But focus on the issues you can get done and work together and try to find a solution. And, and, but when you have that civility and that conversation ongoing, that makes for a better governing process. And that's, and that's what the people want is working together to try to solve problems. So and it is an interesting concept that Tom's talking about. So, But the Problem Solvers Caucus, that bipartisan group, is a good thing to have. And I think we need more of that in our politics, quite frankly. We've been speaking with uh, Assemblyman Phil Palmasano. Assemblyman, uh, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for joining us live. Thank you, Brian. Pleasure to be with you.